There we go, now, okay. Next up we have open mic. Uh, if you haven't signed up, please do. First up we have Mariam Jeber and she will perform ties and orange and bathroom window. Please give it up to Mariam. Mariam. I came from Fortson. I'm a sophomore and I guess I'm going to be reciting some poetry. Um, the first one's called Ties. It's basically, um, I wrote it when I was in the summer of 8th grade. I was going 9th grade and high school is a big deal. You do lose a lot of people on the way and sometimes it's a relief, sometimes it's not. I was like a cattle grazing the food grazing the fields when you stole me, committing an act, a crime of abaction. You only do it when you're weak and I'm happy, much to your satisfaction. You can change my happy, stable mind to one of petrification. I'll admit that I used to show apathy towards you. This must be your contradiction. I don't have anything to give you. You're expecting benefaction. You didn't help. I was the one lost and you thought fake sympathy would give you comfort at reaction. So don't come up to me asking me for help when you're weak. I won't accept this transaction. And don't come up to me thinking that leaving would harm me because it'll only have a positive effect, much to your subtraction. I didn't say that, I did say that I'd always be here for you at first, but know that you caused my retraction. It's funny that you thought I wouldn't realize I was being taken advantage of, that there wouldn't be a reaction. If you really need something to rely on and show you the real world, Use this as your distraction. There's nothing good about a dirty, lying, abusive friend that will you ever scream attraction. You removed me from your group portrait, your excuse being you needed abstraction. I'm fine with that, just know that you are the one to lose me. I don't come back. Not a, not a piece of me, not a fraction. This is me making society aware of your mistakes. So remember that your social decline was your own action. Um, this one's called Orange. I actually wrote it more recently. It's a little bit longer. And it's basically identity. Imagine being an orange, named by the color of your exterior. Named by what is seen on the outside. Why couldn't you be called something fancy, like Broctyl? Why isn't a lime called green, cherries called red, bananas called yellow? Why are you the only one called a color? You know, pomegranate has a nice feel to it. It's pronounced multiple ways, feels like it means literally nothing, but seems to hold many mysteries. I want to be pomegranate. I have a hard shell, a semi-soft layer, hard roundish seeds in me that could either explode with bitterness or a sweet flavor. I want to be the bittersweet pomegranate. No, I want to be a lemon. I want to be look so bright, I want to look so happy. I want people to let me add that needed flavor to a hangout, like lemon edge flavor to a salad. I want to be the color of the sun, spread light over my friends, and still be able to tell harm that if it squeezes me too much, I will be the most sour thing to exist. <laughs> I'm the happy sour lemon. <laughs> but actually that's wrong. I'm only going to be an apple. That's me. I'm an apple, I have a boring ring to my name, and I'm overrated. I had my time to shine, and the people that still enjoy me are the real ones. I come in yellow, green, red, almost a literal purple. I have no restrictions. I'm happy yellow, sick and tired of green, angry and destructive red, calm and mysterious purple. I'm this crunchy thing that you probably hate, and I might get stuck in your teeth, but you love and enjoy me too much to throw me away. I may look horrendous to a few, but my sweetness is noticed by some. I'm the horrendously looking, the sweet apple. Imagine being an orange, though. You're orange, the second layer is orange, everything is orange. Your name and looks represent nothing about what you're made of. 
You're so sweet that you could come off easily as bitter, disgusting, and tasteless. Why couldn't you be Brockdale? But you can't imagine me being an apple. Well, I am an apple. You can't imagine being an orange. <laughs> This one's relatively short. I wrote it just before coming to school this year. Um, I don't necessarily like summer. I like winter, but comes with... Yeah. <laughs> Nights in my home aren't cliche with the noise of a ticking clock. It's more of a night of walking past a bathroom window that's opened, hearing the neighbor's door lock. This occurrence isn't this one night thing, not only on Sundays. It's an every night thing that comes with a bittersweet smell if it rains. The bad thing about me enjoying the bathroom window sounds is that I get attached and I, then I feel lonely during the winter months. The closing of that window makes me feel weak and invalid. I grow attached to things that leave and I can adapt to change, like a runt. But on the days of the open bathroom windows, I'm on top of the world, and the nighttime feels sweeter than molasses. Why does my favorite season of the winter have to make me feel deaf and blind, red of my glasses? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Goodbye. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.